up guys, it's Moogle Lord here, and today we're going to talk about Square Enix. Yes, that's right, Square Enix once again. I know it's been the theme here on this channel for the past couple of days and the topics we have been covering, but it, to me it appears that Square Enix, is, especially when it comes to Eastern Studios, is one of the studios that's actually going through like an internal struggle or an internal battle uh, behind the closed doors when it comes to the identity of the company. And here we are once again that we have more developers that's coming out speaking against censorship. Most importantly, the Dragon Quest, uh, I guess you say producer or creator himself, is also talking about the censorship, especially with the upcoming release of Dragon Quest III Remake, which we also discussed here on this channel. So before I give you my thoughts and opinions on it, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more gaming content here on this channel. Now, for those of you who are new to this channel, um, there was controversy surrounding Dragon Quest III Remake when in terms of censorship for the fact is that they had to cover up some of the female characters in their costumes and also the fact is that um, when it comes to choosing gender, they don't have male and female, they use body type a and B. Now we discussed on that on that particular topic is that um, I always try to put up both point of views when it comes to situations like this because apparently Dragon Quest had body type A and B um, in past titles um, before any of this wokeness has really seeped in and everything. So a lot of people was uh, 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 pointing out that fact as well and I also wanted to bring that to you guys as well. But then you also have the other side of the argument who feels the type of way that they're er erasing uh, a gender altogether, especially when it comes to um, men and women, to the fact is that, you know, they want to make it like there's no difference between a man and a woman or is offensive to a certain crowd of people that we always talked about here on this channel as well, to try to make them feel like they're included. And this is pretty much tick ticking off a lot of people within the community that plays these games is growing up with these IPs and everything. And now, you know, we had a discourse back and forth between the communities about this saying that it's not a big deal. Well, apparently it is a big deal when you have the director or the producer of Dragon Quest himself having issues with this. And Square Enix, some of the developers or the employees with the Square Enix are having an issue with this. So we're gonna dive into this. It's come from an article from Nintendo Everything. Um, it states that Dragon Quest creator on three HD 2D remake designs changes in censorship. Now, since Dragon Quest creator Yuji Hori um, has weighed in on the character design changes and bits of censorship being made for the Dragon Quest 3 um, remake. Now, for those that are underwear, unaware, the original RPG let players choose between a male or female warrior. It's the female design that has been uh, have been discussed as Great Enix made changes to cover up the designs more. That's shown in the image above. The original design is on the left, while the new design is on the right. And do you notice that the same people that advocate, you know, for body positivity, who advocate for women to have choice in how they want to represent themselves, but when it then when it comes to actually, you know, pressing down on this, the person that's really being silenced is women. Even the fictional characters, the female characters have to be covered up. But then you look at the male characters, the male characters can have their shirts off or they can pose in a suggestive, suggestive ways. And we talked about this before, even when it comes to gaming journalists, where there's a double standard when it comes to how females are represented in gaming, while males um, in gaming are left intact and not touched at all. So how can you be for women or protective of women or having uh, and be inclusive of all different type of body types but then when it comes to an attractive woman or a woman with a well figured you know and everything and proud about her figure you have to cover it up like like make that make sense to me but we're going to continue so who are we speaking about the changes in censorship for dragon quest 3 hd remake in the interview at 2024 tokyo game show he was joined by uh uh, Kasahiko Torishima, who previously uh, served as Shonen Jump's editor-in-chief and former editor in charge of Dragon Ball. Hori doesn't seem to see a problem with the female hero's design, but pointed out that showing too much skin could lead to higher classification ratings. Now, that's another thing that we also have to point out. Um, also, the rating system. The rating system, especially when it comes to like these type of games, especially when it, Nintendo games or everything like that, when they're trying to get their uh, get these games in the hands of everyone, they also have to be mindful to not uh, uh, overshoot um, the rating that they're trying to aim for. Because if they overshoot, then they have to boost the rating up. 
But the problem is, it seems like that these ratings now are getting stricter and stricter and stricter, which causing these developers to be able to have to comply um, to the to the rules in order for them to be able to get the game out there to, to reach everybody's hands. But we're going to move on. Um, so he said, also now the game has been changed so that the players choose between type one and type two, rather than having them labeled as man and woman, which is also he something he doesn't understand. Shirashima ended up sharing his own thoughts, bringing up sex education in America and feeling that the country's compliance is really narrow minded. He also believes that it has had an effect on Japan. And yes, it does have an effect on Japan because America or in the West has a big gaming market besides china but america has a big market and what's going on is japan used to only just cater to its own region and then we're uh, the west is an afterthought but that has changed since the market in the gaming industry has changed as a whole where most of their profits are coming from the west when it comes to console gaming and everything like that so now in order for them to, to maintain that profit margin or to be successful uh, within the gaming space since they changed so much, they also be influenced by Western ways because they want a piece of that market. So they think that they have to adapt to whatever the West um, has uh, put um, in place, especially in the Western regions. In order for them to penetrate it, they have to comply or they think they have to comply in order to get their titles out there. So that's why I said that this whole discussion about wokeness and why these companies are doing this, there's it's more nuance to this. There's something at play here behind the scenes. And ratings is one of them and the culture of the West and how big the market the West is that a lot of these companies are trying to penetrate by complying to whatever the West demands. So let's continue. So, so here's the interview uh, that I'm gonna break down to you guys. So the interviewer said that there was a lot of buzz about the costumes. It became a topic of discussion because they weren't exactly the same as they were back then. And that's the problem too. A lot of these remakes are also retroactively changing a lot of elements or a lot of things from the original. So when you're remaking it, yes, I know it's a remake and remake there are some changes in, in that's uh, that, that sometimes has to be done and stuff like that. But you're changing the core essence of particular characters or particular um, art style and direction and visions that these um, developers have. And the fact is that you're going into a past game and trying to adapt it or trying to change it to fit uh, Western modern sensibilities pretty much destroys that whole vision that the developers have. And it also piss off a lot of long time, long time fans who's been playing the original game for so long but now has to put up with the modern sensibilities that's been added to it. But we're going to continue. So Hori says, yeah, um, there were various regulations in place. Apparently it's not allowed to show too much skin. So it's almost like it became like a religious thing. It's become like religion where, you know, women are not allowed to show too much skin, but at the same time, they're advocating for women to have autonomy over their body and, and, and have, have choices and decisions that they make um, that can, you know affect their lives but at the same time oh no you must cover up like which one is it so we'll move on so the interview said well i don't intend uh to dig deep into that it's simply about user immersing themselves in the fiction in fiction and going on the adventure what's wrong with that and then hori says hmm i really don't understand that either and that's the thing uh, and how many times i keep stressing on this channel i stress it more time and time again video games is escape from reality it's a fantasy these characters are much bigger, much larger than life. They're bigger than they bigger than who we are. And we come into these we come into these worlds to escape reality. And the reason why we're able to relate to these characters is the journey, the path that they have, that they have set forth, their personality, and then the actual idealization of how we want these characters to look. We also want to be lost in that um, as well. When it comes to men and women in video games and entertainment in general, like fantasy and everything, as I said before, males represent hyper masculinity in these games and comics and entertainment and movies, and the females represent hyper femininity. And what you see when you see these beautiful, voluptuous women, not even just voluptuous, but a nice toned shape, beautiful face, and everything like that. That's peak femininity. That's what the fantasy is. You know what I'm saying? It's not people don't want to see the real world in their video games unless you're building a game that's based on real life. That's a different thing. 
but this is all fantasy and now they're trying to interrupt that fantasy and by plugging in their own um ideologies and propaganda that they're they, they're trying to feed because they know video games is a multi-billion dollar company uh, industry billions of dollars it makes more than hollywood it makes more than a lot of these industries so it has a lot of influence and in order to influence a generation and influence people what better way is to take over or infiltrate the gaming industry itself so we're going to move forward so Corey said if there's too much exposure the age rating goes up and we talked about that before we also got to keep in mind the esrb which is the the, the the rating on video games but what this also falls apart when you have a mature rate rated game or anything like that and they still censor which doesn't still doesn't make any sense and we've seen that with stellar blade um as well so it says the interviewer said we never thought about that in the past and i said that as well we never thought about that this was the culture itself that's the thing wonders about gaming it's a culture and the thing is when you come into this culture you embrace the culture and now we have a bunch of people since we haven't we didn't gatekeep the gaming uh, the gaming industry or the community itself we made it welcoming to everybody that's why i said when it comes to communities the gaming community is is inclusive as fuck you know what i'm saying and that was the problem because we were too inclusive we allowed everybody in here and now when people came in here people some people that came in here came in here with bad intent and these people that came in has a lot of influence and that's the problem it influenced the industry and it shaped the industry that we see today so let's move on it said a torishima um under the name of compliance it's like an absolute god an evil disguise as good and i said this before so using the self-righteous uh, uh virtual signaling these people behind the scenes that's pushing dei that's pushing this wokeness they're pushing these movements look at sweet baby inc with kim baylor and uh, and these people at black girl gamers and many of a consultant company anita sarkeesian they're trying to use good or virtual signaling or uh, or be the one that's supposed to lead the charge of being inclusive and everything when the gaming industry has always been inclusive but these people came in here using that as a front to be able to push whatever uh political agenda that they have and to father uh, uh, uh um insert themselves for their own for their whatever their own selfish means are that's all it's about they don't care about women they don't care about gay people they don't care about trans people they don't care about black people or people of color in general they don't care about nobody all they care about is themselves and lining up their own pockets that's what it's always been about and people seem to just think that that's a conspiracy theory no this is not a conspiracy theory it's about lining their own pockets up at the expense of the people that they claim to be fighting for but here we go this is where we are so it says um there's no such thing as content that doesn't make everyone um make everyone uncomfortable because beauty and ugliness good evil are different for everyone there are a few things that absolutely must not be done as long as you follow those you're free to do the rest and that's the problem the thing is what Hiroshima is saying is that there's not one thing that offends that, that offends everybody no it's all subjective and the thing is you can't please everybody because now i have to tone this down because i don't want to offend this group but you toning this down does not offend this group now you offending your core audience who's been behind you since the very beginning and you would in this company or this franchise wouldn't be such a highly acclaimed franchise if it wasn't for the base that was there since they wanted to support it so them trying to cater to them it's all it's going to do is offend the actual natural or the original audience altogether. you can't please everybody attract attractiveness ugliness all that other type of stuff is all subjective so you trying to try to please everybody or trying to make everybody not feel uncomfortable that's an impossible task it is so that's when he says there's a religious concept for the west especially in america that influenced their approach to sex education right their approach to compliance is rare is rare is really narrow-minded when selling manga in america everything had to be categorized by age groups 
for shonen jump manga they couldn't be sold unless they were rated ages 13 and up because there's a risk of lawsuits the company also has to get insurance doing business with such ridiculous country uh, with such a ridiculous country is really frustrating because of that japan also gets um, negatively influenced yes because the thing is as i said before it's all about penetrating the west and the thing is can you really blame some of these japanese studios for complying when they're trying to get their audience uh get the get these games out there to their audience but we're going to talk about that um after i finish after we finish this article but yes the West is very is very narrow-minded, and it became more polarizing when it comes to sex and even race itself. Race and sex has become a religion. It has definitely become that, and we're going to discuss that in a second. So, Hori continues on and says, Dragon Quest, um, you used to be able to choose between male and female, but now you can't choose between a man and a woman anymore. We have to label them type 1 and type 2. I really wonder who's even complaining about this, and yes... I agree with I agree about that. Who the fuck is complaining about this? Who gets offended by this because they see man and woman? And the only ones that you can think about, and it's still, that's still a minority too. It's all about trying to please to the trans community. And not every trans, and because I do know a few trans who are not even bothered by man and woman, but they're still trying to appease to these people. And this 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 activist group within the trans community as well, who's trying to, uh, um, who's trying to dictate everything, and this them trying to dictate to the trans, uh, trying to dictate everything and cater to the trans community also means the erasure of just sex in general, or just the erasure of women. Not even the erasure of men. It's more so the erasure of women. The same group that these people are trying to advocate for. They're also trying to erase them at the same time because we have a group of people, men who see themselves as women, women, but can't compete against a natural woman, but to, in order to make them feel comfortable with themselves or make them feel like they're included in this, they have to, they have to water down and nerf women. Like, you see how that works? It doesn't make sense at all. It doesn't, it just, it's just lunacy. So before we finish the rest of this video, I just wanted to report that at the time I recorded this video, there was apparently a new update regarding this Tokyo Game Show live stream regarding the creator of Dragon Quest um, series. And it was stated that this was a complete mistranslation and that there was whoever this third party translator was trying to misinterpret what the creator was saying for nefarious reasons. And I don't really buy that too much because as they started pointing out evidence of what was mistranslated, translated, which was sexual education instead of saying Puritan, and they tried to say that the translator tried to reshape the narrative to make the creator say something negative about the whole thing when it comes to um, identity and sexuality, but doesn't go on to provide any more evidence of this mistranslation. It only translated or showed the mistranslation of two different words. So how much of this actually changed the creator's actual opinion? And we won't ever actually know because the stream was actually taken down. But this is the other reason why I don't really cover um, a lot of articles or titles that when it comes to translation all in itself, because we really don't know if it doesn't actually come from a trustful source or not. So at this point, we don't know who's actually telling the truth when it comes to this. Now, if you have a bias or if this interview had pretty much triggered your bias, then of course you're going to say that this is correct. And those who are on the other side who doesn't like the fact that the creator said something against their narrative, they're going to go with the option of, hey, this was a mistranslated um, interview. So we'll never know. This is another reason why I say take all this with a grain of salt when it comes to this translation and think critically about this. But a lot of evidence that points to this that something is not right here when it comes to this because now it's been completely wiped screen enix had it wiped out in general so i'll leave that up to you guys to make that decision for yourself whether or not that these are true words coming from this interview or if this is actually is a mistranslation or if just square enix is just damage controlling and the journalists are coming in trying to damage control to block the to block the message so let us continue 
But as I said before, see, the thing is, can you really blame some of these Japanese studios or some of these Eastern studios where most of their money comes from the Western market? Now, you have some of your games like Genshin Impact um, from China, uh, from Korea, and then you also have some of your Chinese titles um, at, um, as well um, that, do, does, that does pretty well, well without the West, but majority of the console gaming space or the AAA space, most of their money comes from the West. So can you blame some of these studios who think that, okay, in order for us to be able to penetrate the West and get into the Western scene, we're going to have to, we want to have to play ball. We're going to have to play, I scratch your back, you scratch mine in order to get into these type of industries in, in type of these type of industries here in the Western region, which also opens them up to be also um, infiltrated, which also opens them up to have to rely on these consultant firms because they think that the only way for them to penetrate the West is go to these consultant firms because they don't want to be offended because there is a cultural difference. They don't they don't know what it what offends the West just as much as we don't know what offends the people from the East. So they think that if they go to a Western consulting company, firm that maybe they can help them out and everything like that. But there's a lot of things at, at large here. Now I know some of you could probably say, well, Japan need to just go back to just making their games, you know, for the Japanese audience or keep their games and um, keep their games in Japan. We just need to learn Japanese. And there's some people out there that, that says dumb shit like that. Not everybody is hardcore gamers to the point where they should, where they need to pick up another language in order to gain access to this stuff. You know, so there has to be something. There's something has to give. And we talked about Square Enix before is that they're going through an identity crisis, a big identity crisis of where they want to take the company in the near future or within the next five to 10 years. And we starting to see this shift and we starting to see a lot of these developers within, within these studios actually speaking up. Now, the thing is, in order for this is all this to go away, the thing is, Japan has to comply or somewhat give or take in order for them to release our games here. So in order for this change to completely go away is that one, they still, Japan or these Eastern studios still have to stand up and fight tooth and nail. But more so what's most importantly, Western culture has to get cleaned up. Western culture has to be cleaned up when it comes to the ratings, when it comes to this whole, uh, 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 race and uh, race and and sexual identity is you know being worshiped or seen or seen more of a on a religious scale that stuff has to change in order for the gaming industry or the gaming space within the west in order for that to actually see some changes because as long as the west as long as the west continue to go down the path is going these studios on the other end of the world is going to comply or have to uh, give and take in order for them to be able to release their games to us or unless they stick to the pc platform only or they go completely independent but you gotta understand going independent is not easy just to go independent because when you go independent you gotta use a lot of your money you can't you, you you're relying on your own money and you're not getting help from you know big publishers you're not getting help from a, from a lot of these you know other type of third parties to give give you money in order for you to develop the game that you want you more so got to rely on the resources that you have and those resources can go away quite fast especially a company as big as square enix going like trying to go their own way and stuff that's pretty much damn near nearly impossible they have pretty much would collapse it on its own but they definitely need to take a shift they definitely need to fix in-house and then the west also got to clean up its act and in order for that to happen we still have to do our part to call this bullshit out and to show the damages and the effect that it's doing. And that's the only way for all this to change. The West has to change, has to clean up. It's not the East, it's not the other side. The other side is, is just trying to comply. I'm not trying to make an excuse for them, but you also have to see that there's nuance behind this. You got the rating system and you also got the, got these people, got the studios on the, on the East having to, having to comply in order to get their titles reached reached out to a mass audience so in order for us to in order for this to stop the west itself needs to change it needs to shift there needs to be a cultural shift here in the west which i think personally that we're on the brink of that 2024 has been an interesting year and we're not even done through this year yet i think there's gonna be more like more craziness that comes like politically socially 
and even within entertainment itself. And we want to just wait and see. But I definitely want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below when it comes to this entire situation, when it comes to the producers speaking out um, about Dragon Quest um, 3 and just the West and their how they just idolize or worship um, sexuality. I definitely want to hear your thoughts. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe button for more gaming content here on this channel. This is Moogan Lord signing off. I'll see you game fiends later. Peace out.